Hello, Victory and Tipolo. Welcome to our Sunday service online. I'm Gab. I'm one of your campus missionaries. We are Victory and we are one church in Metro Manila meeting and doing online services in different locations. And that is to honor God and make disciples. Not only here in the Philippines, but to all nations. And at this time, I'd like to invite you 
wherever you are to join us in a time of singing praises and worship to our God. For as it says in the scriptures in Psalm 66 verses 1 to 2, Shout joyful praises to God, all the earth. Sing about the glory of His name. Tell the world how glorious He is. And as you tell the world how glorious who our God is, I'd like you to invite your family, the people close to you there in your homes, to join us in our online service, that you would take this time to pause and reflect how good and powerful our God is. And our prayer is that you would be able to join us until the end of the program. And come on, let's worship our God.
walking alone I never walk alone With you by my side With you by my side Your spirit lives within me No longer I'm afraid With you by my side With you by my side I will go where you will go Take the lead and I will follow Places no one goes Say the word and I will follow I will go where you would go Take the lead and I will follow To places no one goes Say the word and I will follow I will go where you would go Take the lead and I will follow With you by my side, with you, with you by my side, never walk alone. I never walk alone with you by my side, with you by my side. Yeah. Your spirit lives within me, no longer I'm afraid. With you by my With you by my side, your spirit lives within me. No longer I'm afraid. With you by my side, with you by my side. So 
God, we know that there is no one else that we should put our hopes, our trust onto except you. Because God, as we have declared in the song, that you are never failing, that you are never changing. And Lord, knowing that, reflecting on that, and declaring that over our lives would give us peace, peace that transcends all understanding. Lord, help us by your grace to continuously trust you all the days of our lives, even in this season of our lives where things may look uncertain. Help us, God, to put our faith and trust on you alone. And Lord, we are excited with what you're about to do in our hearts and our minds as we fix our eyes on you alone, our God who never fails. Lord, we give you glory and praise for this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. All right? Say amen wherever you are. Welcome to our Sunday service online. And this is Victory. We exist only for two reasons. Whether physically we are meeting or online, 
and that is to honor God and to make disciples. We're glad to see you here. And for our time of giving, let me read to us in Psalm 5 verses 11 to 12. But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. Surely, Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. As we give this afternoon, let us reflect on not only on the provision, the generosity of God, but also His protection over our lives. Why do we need to reflect on that? Kasi tayo, bago tayo magbigay, niisip natin, paano na ako? Pag binigay ko to, paano na yung sa akin? But when you know that God is watching over you, that God is the one thinking about you, protecting you, then it would lead you to trusting Him and being generous in every way possible. Alright? So let's reflect on His generosity and His protection towards us this afternoon as we give. Let us let me remind us that giving is an act of worship whether we do it physically or online. So as you give online today your tithes and offering, you may do, do this by visiting victory.org.ph slash give. Also, you can do that by scanning this QR code. You may also give your tithes and your offering through GCash. And we continuously encourage you to send your prayer requests especially in this time where we feel um, worried about the future we want you we want to pray for you at this time so you can send your prayer request to us by typing this link tiny.cc slash victory antipolo prayer again we let's continue to believe god for his provision his protection over our lives and enjoy the rest of the service
is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside still waters he restores my soul he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me through the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hi, Victory Antipolo. Welcome to our worship service online. I'm Urban. I'm one of the pastors in Victory Antipolo. I hope you're all safe and healthy. Guess what? This is our 10th week of doing worship service online. And praise God, by His grace, okay pa rin po tayo. We're able to do this. Salamat sa Panginoon. Maraming maraming salamat for joining us, for inviting your family and friends, for even sharing this video to the people that you know. Maraming maraming salamat po. As you all know, we are in this series called Perspective. And this series is a series on Psalm 23. I encourage you to memorize Psalm 23. It's a powerful passage. Now in this series, our goal, our objective is that we will have a perspective, a good perspective as we go through this crisis. That we will remember that we have a God that our Lord is like a shepherd to us. He is ensuring that we are first provided. We talk about that on the first week. That we are provided. That we shall not be in want. Hindi po tayo kakapusin sapagkat ang ating pong Panginoon ay nagpo-provide sa atin. Now, 
we also talk about that our Lord, as our shepherd, He ensures that we are at peace. Diba? He set us, us down in green pastures, though sometimes that green pasture may be not that green, but still, He makes sure that we are provided, that we are eating, and that we are at peace. He leads us into still waters. We talk about that last, uh, you know, on the second week of our series. We, we just had a break diba, last Sunday because of the Mother's Day. But now, we are continuing in this series. And today, we're going to talk about protection. That our shepherd is ensuring that we are protected as we go through the valley of the shadow of death. That we should not fear any evil, any schemes of the enemy, because the Lord is comforting us in the midst of this valley. The Lord is comforting us with His rod and with His staff. He is guiding us and guarding us from the work of works of the enemies. Now, I want you to get your Bibles, okay, and turn them to Psalm 23, and we're going to read the entire passage. It's good for you to memorize this. If you have children, let them memorize these passages. It says here, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, and your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you, God, for your word, Lord. Speak to us in a very special way this afternoon, Lord. I pray, God, that your word will minister not only in our minds, but, Lord, even in our hearts. That we will always remember, God, that you are our shepherd who protects us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Alam niyo po, I love, one of the things that I love doing, I love mountain biking. Alam ko, hindi po halata na ako ay nagma-mountain biking, but mas halatang ako ay nagma-vikings. Nakakamiss <laughs> na yung Viking sa Marikina. Okay, so alam ko po, mukhang mas, mas pang Vikings ako, hindi mountain biking, but don't judge me, okay? Nagma-mountain bike po ako paminsan-minsan, <laughs> once a year. Okay? There was a season actually that I was into it. No, pupunta kami dyan sa may Rizal, sa may Timberland. And pupunta kami sa mga mountain trails dyan at nagma-mountain bike kami. Uh, mahirap pag mga pataas, di ba? Yung mga sa hill na part. Eh, pero maganda sa hill, pag pababa ka na, ang sarap nun, di ba? Wala nang effort. Although delikado, syempre, dahil sa speed mo, pwede kang uh, sumemplang, pwede kang madisgrasya. But I remember, may mga parts doon sa mountain trails na valleys, no? Burol sa Tagalog yan. O pwede nating sabihin sa kapatagan. Na yung sa kapatagan, meron yung mga, syempre, narrow, ah, may mga wide, pero may mga narrow din, yung mga gilid ng bundok, di ba? Mga narrow yan, may mga narrow path dyan. Na kung saan, kailangan namin mag-traverse, we need to pass through. Because mahirap nang bumalik dun sa pinanggalingan mo, iikot ka pa. So that's why sometimes we had to pass through those narrow, steep, may bangin na dyan, na mga valleys. And because of peer pressure, nakakaya, di ba? Na hindi ka magpa-pass through. Sabi nila, ay naku, nakapakadubag naman ito. So by, because of peer pressure, sometimes, you know, I would try to pass through them. No? Talagang one time, nanginginig ako, grabe, oh, huwag ka na lang titingin. Nakakatakot, delikado. There are times that I would go to those mountain trails alone. Sometimes with my friends, sometimes alone. And uh, sa atin sa atin na lang po. Okay? Kapag ako ako mag-isa lang, kapag ako'y dumadaan sa mga ganong lugar, eh, bumababa ako sa bisikleta ko, tapos naglalakad na lang ako, tapos <laughs> daladala ko yung bisikleta ko ganyan, tapos naglalakad ako. Why? Because there is no peer pressure. <laughs> but also, if something happens to me, then walang makakaalam. Diba? Walang makakatulong sa akin. Mahirap pagka nag, 
dumadang sa maganon ng wala nakakaalam. Wala na kasa- wala kang kasama, wala kang kita. So hindi siya advisable. Alam nyo, in during the time of David uh, as a shepherd, marami siyang mga ganong karanasan na kailangan niyang padaanin yung mga sheep sa mga narrow, dangerous valleys, no? Mga shadow of death valleys. So pagkat there are times that uh, there the, there will be flash floods and they will have to find another way going back to the sheep pen. So kaya, minsan, ang ginagawa ng mga shepherd, ginadaan nila doon sa, sila sa mga lugar na ganun. And may mga daanan na wala kang option kundi narrow valleys, deadly, very dangerous na mga valleys. In fact, in Israel, they have literally what they call a the shadow of death valley and that is the Kidron Valley. The Kidron Valley. So it is very narrow, steep, and also dark. You know why it's dark? Kasi yung wall, di ba, nung mga canyon, nung mga hills, ay mataas na mataas. Some of them are even 800 feet tall. So hindi mo na nakikita masyado yung arrow doon. So medyo madilim siya. Hindi naman sobrang dilim, pero mas madilim siya compare doon sa mga places na nakikita na sisinagan ng araw. That's why... Uh, tinatawag siyang shadow, the valley of the shadow of death kasi nga, uh, narrow siya, steep, may bangin, tapos madilim. So imagine mo, as a shepherd, you will have to guide all the sheep no, to pass through, to traverse those uh, deadly, those dangerous, difficult valleys. So napaka, napakahirap po na task yan for a shepherd. Now, Sa buhay po natin, we also go through some valleys. Di ba? Valleys, by the way, in the Bible are, you know, they are metaphors for difficult times, difficult situation, trying times, mga crises, mga troubles, tribulations, hardships. So, metaphors yan for that. And, pag sinabi mong valley, dumadaan ka sa isang valley, yun po ang ibig sabihin nun, the valley of the shadow of death, ibig sabihin halos, near-death experience, yung mga ganun. O, napakahirap na mga sitwasyon. At sa buhay po natin, ay dumadaan po tayo sa mga ganun. Tama po ba? Dumadaan po tayo. In fact, maybe some of you, you are in the middle of traversing those valleys. You are now in the middle of a particular valley. Uh, some of you are probably in a no work, no pay valley. Di ba? I, my wife, Magna, was telling me yung mga single mom na kanyang inaano, no? Uh, nililid sa victory group niya. Nahihirapan yung iba. So please, if you know some single uh, mothers in our congregation, please do help them. I'm appealing sa inyo po. Tulungan po natin sila. Especially some of them have even lost their jobs or no pay, no work. Some of them, they are in a no pay, no work valley right now. Some of you, you're probably in a retrenchment valley. No, na-retrench ka, natanggal ka sa trabaho, or you're about to lose your job. Some of you, you're in a bankruptcy valley right now. No? If you're a businessman and you're not sure if you can still continue your business. Some of you, because of these things, you are in an anxiety valley. Mas ma- grabe yung anxiety mo ngayon, lady. Some of you, you're even in a uh, relational conflict valley. Diba, nag-aaway kayo ng madalas ng asawa mo. That's why nga, last Saturday, nagkaroon tayo ng, uh, uh, ano he said, she said, okay, seminar. So, available yan sa ating Facebook page. Pwede nyo siyang panoorin kung if you missed it. So, we are in a relationship uh, conflict valley. And some of you, you're even in a sickness valley right now. May sakit ka, kailang nagkakagulo, kailang ang hirap pumunta sa ospital ngayong ka pa nagkasakit. I know some people na meron po silang cancer. At imagine po, bukod sa they are so vulnerable sa COVID-19, kailangan pa po nilang pumunta ng ospital para sa kanilang uh, chemotherapy. So please do pray for them. Dami po, ang dami po mga tao, they are really going through valleys in life. That's why if you are in a valley right now, if you're in a valley right now, our prayers are with you. And I want you to listen to this message. But you know what? Valleys are normal. They're gonna happen to us. For sure, they're, they're gonna happen to us. Normal po ang valley. There is this um, Arabic proverb that says, all sunshine and no rain makes a desert. 
kapag puro daw sunshine at walang ulan, eh, gumagawa yan ng disyerto. That's why merong disyerto. Tama po yun. Kasi kailangan po natin ng both worlds, eh. Kailangan natin yung uh, rain, kailangan natin ng sunshine. Kailangan natin ng uh, hills and also valleys. So, normal ang valleys. We will all go through, we'll all have to traverse at one point sa buhay natin ng valleys. Iba-iba pong itsura niyan. Now, the thing with life's valleys, ang unique din sa life's valleys ay unpredictable siya. We don't know when it will come, when we will face those valleys, when we will have to traverse those valleys. Meron po ba dito, alam nyo yung mangyayari bukas, alam nyo yung mangyayari next week, alam nyo yung mangyayari next month. Wala po, di ba? And that's why valleys are unpredictable. That's why the Bible says, do not uh, boast about tomorrow because, you know, no, we don't know what will happen tomorrow. Any one of you who, who knows what's gonna happen tomorrow, ikaw na. Ikaw na ang Diyos. Diba? No one, none of us knows. That's why it is unpredictable. Napaka-unpredictable. And also, not only that, it is scary. Nakakatakot. Nakakatakot ng valleys. Especially if you're there. Diba? Imagine mo, ito lang nangyayari sa atin. Paano kung wala ka ng trabaho? Paano kung... Diba? I mean, those things. Grabe yan. Nakakatakot po yan. Scary. It's scary. Valleys are scary. What's gonna happen? Baka malaglag tayo, madilim. Ano mangyari? Baka abutan tayo ng dilim. Mas dumilim pa. At ako, paano na? So, scary po ang valleys. But, David said, the shepherd himself said, sabi niya, knowing that God is our shepherd, sabi niya, though we go through the valley of the shadow of death, He said, I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. Sabi niya, I will fear no evil. We should not be afraid. Sabi ni David, if you are going through a valley right now, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Now, sabi niyo, Pastor, hindi mo lang sabihin niya kasi maaaring wala ka pa sa valley na to. Hindi ka pa natatanggal sa trabaho mo. Diba? May kinakain pa kayo ng pamilya mo. Diba? Nakakabili ka pa ng ring light. <laughs> diba? So, baka sinasabi mo lang yan. But you know what? We're all in a valley right now. All of us, different levels of valleys lang to. Some of, some are really narrow. Some are just okay, but still it's difficult. Sooner or later, we'll all pass through difficult valleys as well. But the Bible says, we should not be afraid. If you are going through a valley right now, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Now, why? Why we should not be afraid? That's the question. Why we should not be afraid? First, okay, first. The reason why we should not be afraid because the Lord is with us. The shepherd is with us. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, David said, because... God is with me. He is with me. The shepherd is with me. That's what he said. If you're going through a difficult time right now, and if you are a believer, you are, you have Christ in your life, you know what? The assurance of the Bible is that you're not alone in that valley. God is with you in that valley right now. And that You know, the shepherd is a good shepherd. He knows what to do. In those valleys, he knows what to do. Alam niya paano mag-navigate, alam niya paano mag-lead ng mga sheep sa mga valleys na yan. Sa mga narrow, steep, dangerous valleys. Kayang-kaya niyan. And you can be, you you can be comforted with the idea na kayang-kaya ng Panginoon yan. Napatawarin ka sa mga valleys na yan. And you're not alone. Di ba it's comforting that you're not alone? Comforting yun na alam mong hindi ka alam. Kaya ako, kaya ako nakakapas through dun sa mga narrow and steep valleys because I know if something happens to me, I have friends who will help me. Okay? So, the same thing in life. It is, you know, yes, it is challenging, it is difficult, it is sometimes depressing to be in a valley, but the thing is, now I'm being reminded, now we're being reminded, that we're not alone in this valley. Hindi po tayo nag-iisa. Alam niyo, lately naglalaro po ako nitong uh, mobile game. Hindi po ako talaga into mobile game, no? Kahit nung bata ako, hindi ako mahilig sa mga game-game, mga computer games, mga family computer, mga Atari. <laughs> Tagal na talaga. So, uh, but lately, I was, you know, invited by some of my friends to play this game called CODM, you know? Um, 
not crash landing on you, okay? Uh, uh, Call of Duty Mobile, CODM. And yung anak ko pala na babae, naalala ko nung maliit pa siya, we used to play this game eh, yung Call of Duty sa meron sa PlayStation. And grabe, sorry po ha, ah, this is one of my parenting, ano lang, learning then experience. <laughs> Mga learning curves ko to eh, dati. Alam niyo, wala ako makalaro sa Laos, di ba? Puro babae na ako eh, tapos maliit pa si Kisha nun. Uh, tapos sabi ko, Kisha, Kichel, can you play with me? <laughs> so naglaro siya. Tapos, sabi niya, one time naglaro kami, it's a war game by the way, no? Sabi niya, Dad, Dad, I killed you, I killed you. After that, sabi ko, huwag ka na maglaro yan. Sabi ko, pangit pala. That's why, no wonder ngayon, yung anak ko si Kichel, ang galing, na-discover ko, naglaro pa rin pala siya nung CODM and he, she's actually very good. Yung mga kalaban niya, yung mga kalaban, kasama namin nun sa aming group, mga puro lalaki, mga pamangkin ko, mga kaibigan ko. Tapos siya yung babae, siya lang yung babae doon, naglalaro siya. And siya yung pinakamagaling sa amin actually. May isang magaling pa, yung uh, uh, kapatid nung friend namin. So pag silang dalawa kasama namin sa team, tapos we're teaming up and then we're uh, competing with others online, eh comfortable na comfortable kami, no? Dahil uh, sure na sure kami na sigurado, mataas yung chance naming manalo. Most of the time, actually, nanalo kami pagkasama sila. Pero kapag hindi sila kasama, parang ang baba nung chance na, uh, na manalo kami. So, iba. Eh, ganun din po sa buhay. No? Kasama natin ang Panginoon. Hindi po tayo nag-iisa. I mean, I just want to encourage you. As we go through this valley, we're not alone. God is with us. That's why we can pass through this shadow of the, the valley of the shadow of death. Kasi hindi po tayo nag-iisa. Pangalawa, okay, the reason why we should not be afraid as we pass through this valley is that because God is comforting us, the Lord is comforting us in the midst of this valley, in the midst of us being afraid, worrying, na baka tayo mapahamak, malaglag sa rabin, di ba? kainin ng mga walls, kasi doon mas vulnerable yung mga ship eh. Diba? Kasi makitid. So, pag bumunta lang doon yun, yung mga ship, malalaglag na lang sa rabi. We have the assurance that God is comforting us. Comforting us. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because God is with me. It says there, His rod and His staff. His rod and His staff. They comfort me. Now, when I was studying this word, this passage, Kailan naman naging comforting ang rod at saka staff? Diba? Lalo na yung rod. Kailan naman naging comforting ang rod? Pamalo. Basically, comforting ba sa inyo yung pamalo? Nung bata ko, pag nakita kayo ng pamalo ng nanay nyo, may inanay mo, may dalang pamalo. <laughs> Naalala ko dati nun, kapag, uh, uh, kasi dapat we have to clean the house eh. Tapos pag tumatakas ako, pag bakasyon, tumatakas ako para makapaglaro na ako ng basketball. Makikita ko, maya maya yung nanay ko, may dalang pamalo. Tapos sinatawag ko, airman! <laughs> so, that's not comforting. You know, for me, pag sinabi mo, Brad, that's not comforting. How can that be comforting? Okay, yung staff, I don't know. I have no idea what is a staff. No, pero yung rod, yeah, pamalo. Hindi comforting yan. But, you know, ang mga shepherds pala, they have two basic tools. Yung una, yung rod, okay, and the staff. Yung rod, ginagamit siya sa mga predators, sa mga uh, animals na umaatake dun sa mga sheep. So, pinama, pinapapalo nila yung para umalis. Okay? Para hindi gambalain yung mga sheep. Kaya pala siya comforting kasi, di ba, if you're a sheep and you know that your shepherd has a pamalo, has a rod, then most likely, you're protected from the, from the, ano, from those uh, animals, sa mga predators. So, pero kung wala, di ba, walang armas yun, eh, di pa paano ka pupotect na? Pero dahil may armas. So, yun ang sinasabi. Ibig sabihin, our God, our Lord is able to protect us in the midst of passing through the valleys. May mga ginagawa ang enemy, eh, di ba? Dinidiscourage ka. May mga ginagawa yan, may ini-inflict na trouble, di ba? Pero, we are assured that if we are in Christ, that if we are, we have God in our lives, di ba? Kung siya ang Diyos ng buhay natin, siya ang shepherd, then our shepherd has, has a rod and that rod is being used not sa atin ha hindi sa atin ginagamit yung rod akala natin di ba sa atin ginagamit yung oh, kulit-kulit mo pa okay putang-putang ng puta niya sa gilid ng rabi malalagot niya pa no hindi hindi ginagamit yun it's not meant to be used to the sheep it is meant to to be used to the predators ginagamit yun doon 
Kaya nga, hindi mo, huwag mong sabihin dahil nasa crisis ka ngayon, e eh, pinarurusahan ka ng Panginoon. Don't say that. Hindi ganun ang Diyos natin. Mapapansin natin dito, sinasabi sa atin, hindi ganun ang Diyos natin. It's not that kind of God. Our God is a good shepherd. The rod is actually not meant to be used to us, but to the predators. Para patal, pa, paalisin sila. Para the schemes of the enemy will not be successful po sa atin. It is meant to guard us. No, not to punish us. That's why when, if you're going through some valleys, God is not punishing you. God is actually helping you. Yun yung staff. Yung staff naman, ang gamit niyan, kapag may nalaglag sa rabin o malalaglag, di ba may hook yun sa dulo? Hinuhook yun. Hinupull back pabalik dun sa linya. Grabe ang Panginoon. Akala natin pinapanish tayo pag nasa bali tayo, nagihirap tayo, nasa crisis tayo. Kasi siguro dahil marami akong ginagawang kasalanan kasi ano, I'm telling you, Kung sa kasalanan mo lang, kung magiging may tit na mga Diyos ngayon, okay, patay na po tayong lahat. Kaya nga yung iba, di ba, nagbe-reklamo, bakit how can a good God allow this virus to spread? Let me tell you this, kung tayo ay parurusahan lamang ng Diyos sa ating kasalanan, eh, yung nangyayari ngayon, wala pa yon. Someday, we're gonna face punishment for our sins. But for now, we see a God who is a shepherd to us taking care of us. That's why now, if you have a chance, go to the shepherd. Because if you are with the shepherd, from now until he comes, you will be comforted. You're not gonna be punished. You're gonna be comforted instead. So you're, the rod will be used not to you, but to the predators. And the staff will be used to actually pull you back so that you will not fall into the ravine. So that you will go back, you'll be back in the line. And you will be able to pass through the valley. Grabe ang Panginoon. You know one thing I like in this um, Psalm 23, in, 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 the, in our passage in this series? We are being reminded once and for all that we are not the shepherd. We are not the shepherd of our life. But we are simply the sheep. Kung ano yun? Ano bang ginagawa ng sheep? Ang ginagawa ng sheep, maglakad. Di ba? If you are going through the valley, lahat ka. Okay, pagka nagugutom ka na, pakainin ka ulit. He will make you settle again in green pastures. Kain ka ulit. Tapos ano pang ginagawa? Iinom. He will, he will lead you to still waters. Iinom ka. Quiet tea. Hinahanapan ka pa ng hindi maagos kasi yung mga sheep nga, di ba? Nadidistract sila pag may malakas na agos, may tunog na tubig. Grabe yung shepherd natin, ganun ka-caring. That's why God is not punishing us in this crisis. If you are going through some valleys in life, God is not punishing God is actually comforting you. He is trying to comfort us. He's making sure that na tayo matatawid natin yung valley niyo ng safe. Nang tayo ay victorious. Ganun po. And that we are just a sheep. We're not the shepherd. And the shepherd is going to take care of us. Yun ang sinasabi sa atin dito sa Psalm 23. Ano pang ginagawa natin? Naglalakad, kumakain, uminom ng tubig, at nag, ah, ano, nag, meh, meh, di ba? Meh, yun lang. Maybe prayer yun. <laughs> We just have to pray. We just have to rely on God. That's why in the midst of the valley, you just have to remember this. You are not alone. And God is comforting you. He's comforting us by guiding us with His staff, pulling us back when we're falling into the ravine, and also with His rod, guarding us from the schemes of the enemy para hindi maging successful yung enemy sa mga plano ng enemy na i-destroy tayo. Kasi yung enemy, what the enemy would do during the valley, alam mo, a-attack yan eh. Mga attack yan, tapos kukuha yan kung sino man yung mahina, hmm, kakainin yan. ba? The enemy would tell you in the midst of the valley, kita mo na, mag-isa ka lang. Mag-isa ka na lang. Wala kang kasama, iniwana ka ng Diyos mo. Ang Diyos, Diyos ka. Wala kang trabaho. Anong, anong ginakain mo ngayon? Wala ka. But you know what? We should just listen to the shepherd, to the guidance of the shepherd. Let's allow the shepherd to do his job. Let's just pray to God. And God, the shepherd, will definitely protect us from the enemies. So God is with us. That's why we should not be afraid. The Lord is with us. And also, the Lord is comforting us. In the midst of crossing the valley, these dangerous valleys, deadly valleys, the valley of the shadow of death, God is comforting us with His rod and with His staff. With His rod guarding us from the predators and with His staff pulling us back when we are falling into the ravine so that we will be able to pass through 
the dangerous valleys. Now last, the reason why we should not be afraid, God is with us, God is comforting us, and also because our God, our Lord, is the Lord of the valleys. He's not only the shepherd of the valleys, but He is the Lord of the valleys. You know, in the Old Testament, see Ahab, King Ahab, during his, the time of King Ahab, there were 32 nations na nag-alay, nag-join uh, nag together to fight Israel. Now, because God's favor was with Israel, so God gave them a, a victory, binigyan sila ng victory. Naging, especially dun sa unang battle nila. So, nagkaroon, nagkaroon ng battle, tapos, they became victorious. God gave them victory. Now, sabi ng mga Syrian generals, nag-meeting sila after the first battle, natalo sila. Ter 32 nations sila, they joined together, tinalo sila ng Israel, eh, kukonti lang. Kasi nga, dahil sa favor ng Panginoon, no? binigyan sila ng favor. So ngayon, nag-gather sila, they had a meeting. In 1 Kings chapter 20, verse 23, sabi doon, And the servants of the king of Syria said to him, Their gods are gods of the hills, and so they were stronger than we. But let us fight against them in the plain, and surely we shall be stronger than they. Sabi nila, eh, kaya naman nanalo yung mga yan, kasi yung god nila, god of the hills. <laughs> Ganun yung east nila eh. Sabi nila, god, kasi, kasi yung powerful yung god nila, god of the hills. Subukan natin, let's fight them in the plain sa valley. Tingnan natin kung manalo yan sa atin. And when God heard it, okay, aha! Oh, God of the hills lang pala ako, ha? Okay, I will show you now that I'm not just the God of the hills, but I'm the God of the plain, of the valley. Sabi niya doon in verse 28, And a man of God came near and said to the king of Israel, Thus says the Lord, because the Syrians have said, The Lord is a God of the hills, but He is not a God of the valleys. Therefore, I will give all this great multitude into your hand, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Our Lord is the Lord not only of the hills, but also of the valleys. Even we go through some tough times, our Lord is the Lord of the valleys. He is in control. He, he is in control of every situation. Kahit na, kahit na ano pang mangyari sa atin, Kapag tayo ay nasa Panginoon at ang ating Panginoon ay Lord of the Valleys, we're gonna be okay. Kahit ano pang valley yan. Anong klase mang mga valley yan. You know, do you know Rabbi Zacharias? Rabbi Zacharias, he's a man of God, a minister, especially he's known uh, when it comes to apologetics ministry. Yung apologetics ministry, these are the people who are uh, good in articulating our faith, in explaining, defending our faith dun sa mga nag inquire sa mga taong nagcha-challenge ng ating faith. In fact, he pioneered a ministry on this and it was very successful. It's very successful until, until now actually. But recently, all of a sudden, hindi mo, hindi mo na nakikita masyado si Rabbi Zacharias until last week, they showed this picture on, on social media and sabi nung anak niya na may cancer nga yung dad nila at uh, now, inuwi na sa bahay and just waiting for his time. Si Rabbi Zacharias, ang galing-galing niyan magpaliwanag tungkol sa Diyos na mga sitwasyon na katulad niya. Pero ngayon mapapansin mo, no, hindi siya nagpapaliwanag. Hindi siya. Tahimik lamang siya. Maybe some of the critics ni Rabbi Zacharias, yung mga atheists, yung mga hindi naniniwala sa Diyos, maybe they're saying, look, see, kita mo na, wala talagang Diyos. Tingnan mo, pinabayangan ng Diyos mo. Pinabayangan ng Diyos mo dyan sa Bali. Just a sickness valley point. In fact, you're now in a death valley. Maybe they're saying that. I hope not. Maybe some of them. That, that's probably the, in their mind. Na pinabayaan na si Rabbi Zacharias ng Diyos niya sa valley. Kala ko ba, Pastor, God is with us in the valley. Kala ko ba, Pastor, God is comforting us. Di ba? Guarding us from the schemes of the enemy. Guiding us na hindi tayo malaglag sa rabin. Kala ko ba ganun yung Diyos natin? I thought our God, this shepherd, is the Lord of the valleys. How about may mga ganyan tulad ni Rabbi Zacharias in a sickness valley. Not only in a sickness valley, but also in a death valley. Mamamatay na. Anytime mamamatay. So how can this shepherd, di ba, protect? Paano niya sinasabing kaya tayo protectahan, kinukomfort na tayo that He is with us. Now, let me tell you this. For those who do not know God, for those who are not in Christ, for those who do not have God in their lives, pwedeng 
ang isipin natin yung kamatayan is the end of everything. For them, it's the end of everything. But for us, death is actually the best thing that can happen to us. Death is the best thing that can happen to a man. Because death is the beginning of eternal things with God. Ibig sabihin nun, kung saan pupunta si Rabi Zacharias, wala nang valis, wala nang sickness, wala nang problema. And I think the Lord has not abandoned Rabi Zacharias. Right now, God is comforting him, making sure that he is going to have a, you know, a great time with his family as he spends in, you know, as he waits for his time. But even kung siya man ay mamatay, bawiin ang kanyang buhay ng Panginoon, the Lord has not, has definitely not abandoned. In fact, the Lord, the shepherd, has been successful in comforting him, in guiding him, in making sure that he will not fall into the ravine. You know, na siya ay mamatay habang buhay separated ng Panginoon. In fact, the shepherd has been successful in making sure that the schemes of the enemy sa kanyang buhay ay hindi maganap. Sapagkat ngayon, ibig sabihin nito, siya yung makakasama ng Panginoon. Hindi naging successful yung enemy in separating him from the love of God. That, that the enemy has not been successful because of the shepherd. Yes, he could die anytime. Maari mamatay po siya. But death is not the end of everything. Death doesn't mean that God has abandoned us. God actually has been successful in protecting him, in comforting him, in making sure that he's going to spend eternity in heaven. And in heaven, there are no longer valleys. Wala na pong mga valleys. Wala na hardships. Wala na. And that's the best place that we can be. You know, what's the worst thing that can happen to us for you and me? The worst thing is that we live this life without God. That we deal with the valleys, that we pass through those valleys apart from God. That's the worst thing. That's why, sana, you are prioritizing God in your life. Because that's the worst thing. That's the saddest thing that can happen. But the best thing actually that can happen to us to live this life, knowing that we have God, that we have God in our lives. He is with us. He is comforting us, guiding and guarding us. And that He is the Lord of the valleys. That we will surely overcome every valleys that we will go to. Even death. Because that means we will be spending eternity with God in heaven. So let's face, let's deal with our life's values, with the presence of our Lord, our Shepherd, who is also the Lord of the valleys. Did you get the message? Let me pray for you right now. Lord, thank you God for your assurance that you are the Lord of the valleys, that you are with us in the valley difficult times, Lord, that you are comforting us with your rod, making sure the schemes of the enemy will not be successful. You are comforting us with your staff, Lord, that you are pulling us back into the line, making sure, God, that we will not be separated from you forever, that we will be able to pass through every life's valleys, God, that we will be uh, dealing with. Thank you, God. Lord, some of our of you know, people right now who are watching this, worshiping with us, are going through some tough times, Lord. Some of them, they're in a difficult, even dangerous valleys, Lord. Lord, in the name of Jesus, God, I pray that you will minister to them, Lord, right now. That you would comfort them, God, Lord. That you would guide them what to do, Lord. Lord, I know, God, you are protecting them with your rod, Lord. The enemy will not be successful in discouraging them. Some of them, in an, they, they are in an anxiety valley right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray, God, with your rod, Lord, that you will, Lord, protect them from the schemes of the enemy, Lord. That you will silence the enemy right now. And, Lord, I pray, God, let your word, let the shepherd's staff be felt, be comf let your people be comforted with your staff. As you, Lord God, rescue them from this ravine. Rescue them from this narrow, this steep, this dangerous valley that they're going through right now. Lord, we're going to trust you, Lord. That yes, we're going to go through this valley. We're going to deal with this valley, Lord. But Lord, we are not alone. You are with us. You are going to comfort us. You are going to guide us. You're, you're going to guard us. You're going to, Lord God, you are the Lord of this valley. We will surely overcome. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Maybe some of you, you are, you know in your heart, you know in your heart that 
the Lord is not yet the shepherd of your life. And this is the best time to recognize Him as your shepherd. Because apart from that, you're going to have a difficult time in facing your valleys. And so I want you to surrender your life to Jesus who died on the cross for your sins. He already died for your sins. Kaya sabi nga doon, we're just sheep, we're just follow. There is no striving anymore. Whatever happens to us, like Rabbi Zacharias, we're going to go to heaven. Not because of our goodness, not because of the things that we can do or we do to that, but because of what Jesus did on the cross for you. And if you are that person, I want you to, I want you to pray this prayer with me. If you want to surrender your life to Jesus, make Him the shepherd, the Lord of your life, and just follow Him, I want you to pray this prayer with me. That can happen, my praying. Bow your heads right now, and I want you to pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Forgive me of my sins. I am now repenting from all my sins. And Lord, I am, Lord, recognizing you as my Lord and Savior, as my shepherd. Take control of my life, Lord. Let me just obey you and follow your guidance. Lord, protect me from the schemes of the enemy to steal me, kill me, and destroy me. Bring me away from you, Lord. Lord, I pray, God, I will be protected forever. So, Lord, I receive, Lord God, your the life, the new life, the salvation that you're giving me, that you accomplish in the cross. And, Lord, from now on, let me follow you. Let me honor you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. If you made that prayer, if you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we want you to do these two things. First, we want you to connect with God. Pray to God. Read the Bible. You can start in the book of Mark. And also, you can download this one-to-one app. The one-to-one app will help you grow in your relationship with God, in your walk with God. And if you want someone to help you explain the one-to-one, then you may contact the number on the screen. We would love to help you as well. You may also contact the person we invited you to watch this video, to watch this worship service online. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat for joining us. Once again, thank you. Don't forget our worship services online, our services online. We have uh, morning devotions every Monday, Tuesday, and Saturday, 9 a.m. We have um, prayer and worship night every Thursday okay, um, at 6 p.m. Also every Friday, our youth service at 6 p.m. and also Saturdays every 4 p.m. our kids church online and of course every Sunday 11 a.m. 2 p.m. for our worship services. Maraming maraming salamat po. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord show His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you and may the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. See you next Sunday.